Good morning, sir. I'm Dexter De Bautista. Today, I'm gonna report my topic, which is the engine latte process. The father of the modern engine latte process was Henry Maudslay, who invented the slide rest in the early 19th century. Maudslay, an English mechanic, combined the movable slide rest with a lead with screw by means of change gears. The combination permitted to Maudslay to cut screw threads from 16 to 100 threads per inch. It made the latte the most important machine in the Industrial Revolution. What is an engine latte? An engine latte is a power driving general purpose machine tool used for producing by cylindrical work pieces. As the piece of the metal to be machined is advanced to regionally into the work piece of specific depth and moved to longitudinally along the axis of the work piece. So base both inside and outside surfaces can be machined on a latte by using attachment and accessories and others such as drilling, reaming, boring, taper and angle turning, screw thread chasing, form turning, knurling, miling, grinding, and etc. Describe the various types of engine latte. The engine latte are manufactured in a variety of types and sizes from very small bench latte used in a precision instrument and watch making industries to gigantic latte used for turning large steel shafts which weigh many tons and the different types of engine lattes are bench latte, small engine latte, which can be mounted on a bench or metal cabinet. Second, standard engine latte, large, heavier, and more powerful than the bench latte may have been length from 5 to 20 or more feet. Third is tool room latte, precision engine latte equipped with additional attachments needed for tool and the die making operation. Third is name of the five major parts of engine latte. First is bed, headstock, tailstock, carriage, feed and thread cutting mechanism. Describe the bed of the engine latte. The bed is often called the backbone of the latte. The accuracy of the latte depends mainly upon the rigidity, alignment, and accuracy of the bed. It is uh, sturdily cast with the cross ribs to withstand and stresses of heavy cuts and coarse feeds. The top surface called the waist of latte are machined to, to form inverted V's and flat sides. The way are the accurate scrap to give the true alignment to the head stock, tail stock, and the carriage. Some latte have flat ground waist only. Describe the part of the engine latte head stock and their function. The head stock is located at the end of the latte bed. To the operator left, it is a clamp solidly on the inner waist and supports and houses the spindle and the means for turning the spindle. The spindle which is supported by precision bearings located at 2 or 3 point in the headstock is al allowed through entire length to allow bar stock or work holding attachment to pass through. Describe of an engine latte tail stock and their function. The tail stock has two major parts, the bottom casting and the top casting. So the bottom casting is a machine very accurately to fit the waist of the bed. Explain the purpose and construction of the latte carriage. The, 
the carriage carries the cutting tool and the pre precisely controls its movement either parallel to the waist called thread turning or at right angles to the waist called facing. The carriage has three major parts, the saddle, compound rest, and the apron. The saddle rests and slides on the waist and contains the cross feed. Mechanism for moving the cutting tool at right angles to the waist. Explain the power feed and thread cutting mechanism. Most standard engine latte are equipped with a feed rod and a lead screw. The feed rod is used to provide automatic power feed to the carriage when turning or machine work piece. How is the size of the engine latte designated? In the United States, the size of the engine latte is designated by the largest diameter of work that can be revolved over the waist of the latte bed. In the Europe, the size is given as the radius of the largest job that can be swung over the waist. What is face plate? A face plate is similar to a drive plate but larger in the diameter. It contains more open slats or T slats so the bolts or T bolts may be used to clamp the workpiece to the face of the plate. What is the procedure for setting up work on a face plate? Place the face plate on the bench face up, set the workpiece on the plate, arrange the bolt washers and nuts in the slats of the suitable clamping, arrange the clamps and step blocks or packing pieces. Center the workpiece by eye and tighten the clamping nuts just securely enough to hold the workpiece in the place. Why are the counterweight necessary on a face plate? A counterweights are used to balance and fa face plate when work pieces are mounted of center they aid is in distributing the weight evenly so that the pl face plate will turn smoothly while machine takes place name the chucks commonly used for holding work pieces the commonly the commonly used chucks are three jaw universal chuck four jaw independent chuck and the magnetic chuck what is the three jaw universal chuck a three jaw universal chuck holds cylindrical or hexagonal work all three jaws move together to bring the work on center two sets of the inter -jaw. interchangeable jaws are provided because the jaws are not reversible, reversible these are called in, inside and outside jaws. One set is used to grip the work inside while the other is used to grip the work on the outside. How are the jaws changed on the three jaw universal chuck? The slot of the chuck are numbered 1, 2, and 3. Each jaw has a corresponding number. Remove the jaws from the chuck by backing them out with the chuck wrench. What is the four jaw independent chuck? The four jaw independent chuck is used to hold most of the work for which a chuck is required. The hardened steel jaws are reversible and will hold work of different sizes and shapes. How is work true in a four jaw independent chuck? A four jaw independent chuck has several circular grooves around the face of the body. The jaws may be approximately centered by adjusting the jaws to these grooves. 
what is a combination chuck? A combination chuck is usually a four jaw chuck in what in which the jaws may need be adjusted either independently as in a four jaw independent chuck or together. As in the three jaw universal chuck, it is a useful for duplicate work piece. The first piece what is magnetic chuck? A magnetic chuck holds steel work pieces by means of permanent magnets contained within the chuck. The face of the chuck is magnetized by inserting a key in the chuck and turning in, into 180 degree. What is the color attachment? Collet attachments provides a quick means of the attacking work pieces with standard diameter or the sizes. Shows the collet attachment mounted in the headstock. One type of the collet attachment consists of the taper sleeve, which fits in the spindle hole of the latte and the drawbar and the set of collet. What are the rubber flex collets? The Jacob spindle nose collet chucks and rubber flex collets can handle a wide range of work diameter other than the standard diameter. The 11 collets shown will hold work pieces ranging in a diameter from 116 through 1% inches. What is steady or center rest? A steady rest is a device it's a device that is the clamp of the waist of the latte to support the long shaft during turning, boring, and threading operations by holding the works more rigidly and steady rest prevents the work from spraying away from the from the cutting tool. A steady rest with rollers in the jew is recommended for operation require, requiring high work speeds. What is a tool post? The tool post is used to clamp and hold various types. Types of cutting tool holders or the latte attachment. The holder rest of the wedge which is the shape on the bottom to fit into the concave shape. Providing a means of adjusting the tool holder to a required position in relation to the work being turned. What is a grinding attachment? A grinding attachment, often called uh, a tool post, tool post grinder, is a, mot is a motor itself contained unit that is held in the tool post. It is used for outside and and inside grinding, some grinders are especially designed for grinding screw threads. What is the miling attachment? A miling attachment consists of the slide and the swivel vise mounted of the compound rest in the place of the tool post. The base of the swivel vise has degraded graduations and so can be set at any desired of angle. What attachment accessories are used to hold work to be turned between the centers? The equipment required to hold work between the centers consists of a uh, first is a live center, second is a dead center, third is the drive plate, and the last is the bent tail latte dog. What is the difference between a dead center and a live center? A dead center is used for in the steel stock spindle and does not revolve. And the live center fits in the head stock spindle and revolves with the work. The dead center should be always be hardened center. What is a spindle sleeve? For the latte, with a very large taper hole in the spindle, the taper sleeve serves as an adapter to receive the smaller taper of the center. The outside taper of the sleeve fits the taper bore of the spindle and the internal taper 
is made to fit the taper hunk of the center. What is a live tail stock center? A live tail stock center has ball bearing mechanism that permits the 60 degree points to revolve with the workpiece that eliminates friction permits work to be turned at high speed and those not required oiling and constant adjustment as those the standard their dead center. What is mean by alignment of centers? Alignment of centers means that both the dead or the tail stock center and the live head stock have a one common center line. When centers are in exact alignment, the workpiece being turned will have the same diameter throughout its entire length. This is a called straight turning why must the live center run through to produce the true cylindrical workpiece when turned between centers unless the live centers runs perfectly through it will be impossible to turn a cylinder that is the concentric throughout its entire length when the work is the reverse between the centers and the two cuts will not meet exactly resulting in an eccentric rather than the concentric work piece. What extra care should be taken in inserting a piece of work between the centers? If the dead center is carelessly first against the end of the work close to the edge of the center hole. The hole may be a bird of naked. Should this happen, the work will not run through. What are the latte dogs? The latte dogs are devices attached to the work pieces to be turned between the centers. A set screw or two clamping screws hold the dogs securely to the workpiece. The bent tail fits closely into one of the drive plate slots to drive the workpiece. How should knurling be done on the last day? Position the knurling tool in the tool post so that it is the right angle to the work. The center of the knurling rules should be set at the height of the work center to permit the knurling rules to center. On the work, have equalized the pressure on the each of the rules. What is the procedure for drilling and reaming on a latte? Holes are drilled on a latte in a manner opposite to the ways holes are drilled on a drill press. On a latte, the work revolves and the drills is held stationary. Small sizes of this are held in a drill chop of the same design as those used on a drill press. The chop is held in the steel stock. Spindle as in larger drills are held in a drill holder, which is supported by the tool holder on the left side of the handle and by the dead center of the tail stock on the right side. Caution. Care must be taken to prevent the holder from slipping of the dead center. What is the operation of boring? Boring is the operation of enlarging a hole previously made by drilling, casting, or some other means. Usually, a single point tool is used to remove the stock as it is filled against the revolving work. Holes are bored to make them accurate in size and concentric with the outside surface. Um, what are some good general rules for, for boring? The operation of boring holes of var various diameters and lengths presents special problems requiring good judgment and skill.
A good general rule is to use the largest diameter boring bar that will fit into the hole and hold it as short and rigid as possible. How is the filing polishing done on the latte? A smooth bright finish can be obtained on metal parts by filing and polishing. When the filing and polishing is required, the diameter should be left oversized of 0.002 or 0.003. A smooth small file and for a long angle, latte file is then used to remove the tool mark. Is explain the tail stack offset method of taper turning. When a workpiece is placed between the centers of the latte with the tail stack top out and of true alignment, a tapered piece is produced the amount of tail stack is offset to produce a given taper depends on the overall length of the workpiece and taper per foot or taper per inch. For given offset work pieces of different lengths will be turned with different tapers. Explain the tail stock offset method of taper burning. When a work piece is placed between the centers of a lot with the tail stock out of the true alignment, a tapered piece is produced. The amount of tail stock is offset to produce a given taper depends on the overall length of the work piece and the taper per foot or per inch for a given offset. Work pieces of different lengths will be turned with different tapers. What is a good method of making the offset? Assuming the centers are in alignment, the offset may be as follows. Either clamp the tool holder sideways on the tool post or reverse it so that the body of the tool post can be moved into touch the extended tail stock spindle or reverse the tool holder and use the end of the tool holder instead of the tool post. Using the crossfit screw, feed the tool post in until it almost touching the tail stock spindle. Turn the cross feet back just far enough to remove all the backlash. Set the cross feet graduated, the graduated dial at zero. Explain how to use the taper attachment. Each end of the swivel guide bar is graduated. One end has graduations in degrees and the opposite end has a graduations in inches per foot with each graduation representing one over one six inch taper per foot. How should compound slide be set to turn an external angle having a 60 degree include angle? Adjust the set of compound to 30 degree angle from the center line of the lot. What is the procedure of machining a tapered shank? The shank is the first machine on three lot to the required length and to the size of the diameter of the large end of the taper. The lot is, is then adjusted to cut the taper according to the specified taper per foot in the case of the standard taper or according to the number of degrees of taper for special tapers. What is procedure for machining tapered hole. A hole equal in size the small diameter of the taper in the first drilled or bored to the required depth. For example, a hole for the number 3 Morse taper would be made 0.778 inches in diameter and 3 and 14 inches deep. The hole may be bored to the finished tape, taper size finish rim with the taper rimmer after roughing out the taper by boring. While is the operation of threading. External threading is the cutting of threads on the outside of the bar of a material internal threading is the cutting of the threads on the inside of the hole. Explain how tapping may be done on a lath. First drill, then the drill hole to be tapped with the correct size tap drill. Small holes may be tapped holding by tap in a T-tap wrench. Support the end of the T-tap wrench with the tail stock center. Explain how a threading die can be used to a thread a piece in the lath. Adjust the tool holder in the tool pass so that it is parallel to the center line of the lath and is set to the extreme right of the compound side T-slot. Back out the cross feed as far as possible. 
what information is necessary before cutting a screw thread on the lap? Most blueprints specify the following information needed before screw thread can be cut, cut on a lap. What is the center gauge and for what purpose it is used? A center gauge is a small flat steel tool which usually has three different sides, 60 degree included angles cut in. It is used as a tool grinding gauge in a tool gauge when cutting. What is the purpose of adjustable stop? The adjustable stop provides a means of preventing the tool from being fed to, too far into the workpiece when the tool is being reset for successive cuts. What is the purpose of the thread chasing dial? On lats not equipped with a chasing dial, it is necessary to leave the split or half not engage with the lead screw and reverse the lat spindle or lead screw or for each successive cut. When cutting a thread on a lat, what precaution should be taken to check the setting of the lead screw? To ensure proper setting of the lead screw, make a very light first cut. The number of a thread per inch may then be measured by placing a rule on the work and counting the number of a thread in inch or one half inch and so forth. Or a scale on a center gauge may be used if the threads per inch are the same or a multiple of the graduation used. A screw pitch gauge may also be used to count the thread. How many distance be calculated for the depth of thread when using the compound slide at 30 degree? When cutting a, when cutting a 60 degree national thread, the distance to fit compound side slide to obtain the, the correct depth of a thread may be calculated by dividing 0 0.750 by the number of the threads. Are all threads cut right hand? No. Threads are cut right hand unless otherwise specified. When a left hand thread is required, it is indicated as in the specification, for example, 3, 4, 10 NCLH thread. How are the left hand threads cut on a lath? When a right hand thread is cut, the cutting tools travels from right to left. The, to a cut left hand threads, the lead screw is reversed so that the cutting tools travels from left to right. How should the cutting tools be set? to a cut tapered thread. The cutting should be set square with the axis of the workpiece and not with the tapered portion. What are multiple threads? There are the multiple threads. When two or more thread groups are cut around circumference of the workpiece, they are called multiple, multiple screw threads. When two threads are cut, it is called double thread. Three threads are called triple threads and four threads are called quadrupole threads. What is a single point cutting tool? A single point cutting tool is a tool with a one face and a continuous cutting edge that removes metal from a workpiece being machined in lath, planer, shaper, or other machine tool. Describe several types of single point cutting tools. There are solid type and tip single point cutting tools. The solid type is made entirely of the cutting material the tape type consists of a small tip of cutting tool material attached to steel shank, brazing, welding, or clamping. How are the angles of a cutting tool measured? The unit message measurement is the, is the degree. The measurements for the proper angles for a cutting tool may be estimated. It is more accurate to use measuring tool such as steel protector. How can the angles of a tool be measured with sufficiency accuracy. Many machinists visualize the angles to which they grind the surfaces of a single point cutting tools, often by comparison with the hands of a clock. What is back ridge angle? The back ridge angle is the angle formed by the top surface of a tool bit and the ground top face of the tool. What is the purpose of the back rake angle? The purpose of back rake angle is mainly to surface the tool so that it slopes away from the side cutting edge. What is the purpose of the side rake angle? The side angle performs a similar function of the back rake rake angle rather. It guides the direction of the chip away from the job. It is usually ground from 6 degree to 15 degree. Define a right cut and left 
left cut tool bit. A right cut tool bit is ground to cut from right to left toward the headstock of the lad. A left cut tool bit is ground to cut from left to right or toward tail stock of the lad. What is the side relief angle? The side relief angle is the surface of the cutting tool found below the cutting edge. What is the purpose of the side relief angle? The relief angle permits the tool to be fed aside waist into the job so that it can out without rubbing. If this angle is too small, the tool cannot be fed into the job. What is the relief angle? The end relief angle is formed by front of the cutting tool an imaginary line drawn a tangent zero to the job or to the job at the right angles to the center line of the lot. What is the purpose, purpose of the end relief angle? The end relief angle prevents the tool from rubbing against the job. The size of the angle may vary between 8 degrees to 15 degrees. What is a chip breaker? A chip breaker is a groove that is ground just behind the cutting edge of the tool bit. Groove need not to be carried to the extreme edge of the tool. What is the purpose of the chip breaker? Chip breakers are ground into tool bits in order to control the continuous ribbon like chips form at high cutting speeds. Continuous chips are dangerous to the operator. How does the cutting of our parting tool differ from the cutting tools? A parting tool cuts up in one direction only, straight forward into the job. The back rate is kept to a minimum prevent the tool from digging into the job. What is a boring tool? A boring tool is a lot tool used to enlarge the size of holes. What is the correct shape of a tool bit? The shape of a tool bit will depend upon the work is required to do. Regardless of the shape of a tool bit, it must be remembered that every cutting edge must have a relief angle. What must be used when grinding tool, bits? tool bits? Cutting tools should not be overheated. Excessive grinding heat causes a breakdown of the cutting edge. How are rake and relief angles ground a high speed tool bit? High speed steel tool bits are easily ground on an off hand tool grinder. What is card carbide tip tool? A carbide tip tool has a piece of a cardi ball braced to the nose of a steel. How are rake and the relief angles ground on a cemented carbide tool bit? Grinding and sharpening cemented carbide tools requires a grinding machine and grinding wheels different from the, those used for grinding high speed steel tools. What is the carbide insert method for cutting tools? A carbide insert method consists of small tips of carbide held and speci specially designed tool holders. What are the ceramic cutting tools? Ceramic materials such as aluminum oxide are made in the form of inserts similar to carbide. What is meant by honing a tool bit? Honing a tool bit means smoothing the cutting edges with all stone. Best results are obtained by holding a stone at 1 degree to 2 degree less than the rake and honing around a narrow flat 1 over 32 inch adjacent to the cutting edge, use a fine oil stone for high speed steel and cast alloy tool bits. Use a fine grit diamond hand hone or a honing carbide tipped tool bits. What is a diamond hand hone? A diamond hand hone is used to smooth the cutting edge of a carbide cutting tool bit. The diamond impreg impregnated pad is mounted at the end of a holder. The holder is from 3 over 8 to 1 half inch square and 4 inch long. Same holder support of a diamond abrasive paid on each other end. What is a tool ho holder? A tool holder is device for rigidly holding a cutting tool in a desired position in tool pass post rudder of the lot. Describe some common tool holders. There are some tool common holders. Lath, hold, lath tools holders are made in the several style, each adaptable to a particular turning operation. The purpose of each holder is to make it easier to apply the cutting tool to the workpiece being turned. Shows 
Some common types of tool holders. Holders for cemented car carbide tool bits are similar. Explain how tool holders should place in the tool post for turning work. As a general rule, position the tool holder in the tool post at approximately 90 degrees with the center line or a little in the direction of the dead center when feeding toward the headstock. What caution should be taken to position the tool holder when taking a heavy cut? When taking a heavy cut, do not have the tool pointing in the direction of the live center. If the tool is pointed in the direction and runs out into a hard spot, the material will have a tendency to move a tool away, forcing it to dig into the work. This precaution is necessary when taking a right cut. Can all materials be machined at the same time? No. The speed when a material can be, can be machined will depend on its structure, hardness, tens, tensile strength, and abrasive qualities. Will, con will the condition of the machine affect the speed of machining? Yes, old machines or, or machines in poor conditions slow down production. Worn bearings and loose slides cause vibration to develop the spoil the finish of the job. Can the shape and condition of the cutting tool slow down the cutting of material? Yes, a cutting tool ground with the wrong relief and rake angles can spell the finish and cause breakage and damage to the job. How can the speed of the machine be safely approximated before starting to cut the materials? Researchers have established suitable cutting speeds for machining various materials. These speeds are published in handbooks and other technical publications. Cutting speed is measured in surface feet per minute. Define cutting speed. Cutting speed is the rate at which a point on the circumference of the work passes the tool bit. It is measured its surface feet per minute. Define cutting speed. Cutting speed is the rate at which a point of a circumference of the work passes the tool bit. It is measured in the surface per minute. Explain how cutting speed may be calculated when the diameter D of a workpiece and the revolution per minute RPM are known the cutting speed. CS may be calculated as follows. As you can see in this slide, it has the calculation, the formula, and the solutions of the given problem. Calculate the cutting speed for a 3-inch diameter work press revolving at 120 RPM using the simplified formula. CS 1 fourth times 3 times 120 equals 360 over 4 or it divided 8 and divided by, by 4 equals 90 FPM. What are the recommended cutting speed for some of the commonly used materials? Cutting speeds in feet per minute or FPM for machine, machining some common materials using high speed steel tool bits. How is the RPM a lot calculated for a given material? To calculate the RPM when the cutting speed CS in diameter D of the workpiece is known as the following formula may be used. Calculate the RPM for machining a cast iron workpiece 5 in diameter, inches in diameter. As you can see in this slide, it shows everything also. What factors can modify the recommended cutting speed? The recommended cutting speed are based on the ideal machine and job setup condition as well as correctly shape of cutting tools. Why should the recommended cutting speed be changed when taking a rough roughing cut? When roughing cut job, the cut vacant is deeper and the feed per revolution is increased. The RPM is reduced in order to maintain the life of the cutting tool. What is the effect of the excessive speed on the life of the cutting tool? The friction between the job and the cutting tool creates heat. The other chip passing over the cutting tools, more heat. The hardness of the cutting tools is affected by the increased temperature. The keenness of the edge of the tool becomes a dull and its cutting efficiently is reduced. What can be done to carry away the heat from the cutting tool? The temperature of the job, the chip, and the cutting tool is reduced when a stream of liquid is directed. Will any liquid give satisfactory cutting tools? There are several types of coolant liquid called cutting liquids. The two most commonly used are water-soluble 
oils and cut, cutting oils used for adult. What is water syllable cutting fluid? A water syllable oils are mineral oils to which an emulsifying agent has been added. Water is also added to this mixture to form a milky white fluid, which is referred to by sharp men as a soapy water or milky water. What are the advantages result from the use of cutting fluids? Cutting fluids carry the excessive heat from the cutting tool, the chip, and the job. What machining operation are benefit benefited by the use of the water syllable fluids? Water syllable fluids are used on, remember, lath work, miling, grinding, shipping, planing, power saving, and drilling. How do cutting oils differ from water syllable oils? Cutting oils are a mixture of, of mineral oils which chemical compounds. They are used without dilution, mostly on a production work and produce a production type machine as autom automatic screw machines in turret lots. Will one cutting fluid prove satisfactory for all metals? Many different cutting tools have been developed to meet specialist demands. Some are suitable for ferrous metals such as carbon and allied steels. Others are most effective when used a copper, brass, bronze in a wide range allied metal having copper brass or bronze as a base. Is it possible to use water syllable cutting fluids more than once? Yes, the cutting fluid is usually pumped over the cutting area by small pump. The fluid runs out, runs over the tool and job end. After passing through a staining screen, is collected in a storage tank where it is cooled and made be ready for using. Concealable oils be used too often or keep fire too, too long a period? Yes, when heavy cuts in severe feeds are being used, high temperature will result. This can cause the water to evaporate and change the desired of water ratio. Normal water evaporation over a long 220 period of time will also change the desire of oil water ratio. Will oil in the cutting fluid become rancid after it has been repeatedly used, it is possible for bacteria to develop in cutting fluids, and this may be caused undesirable outdoors. Are cutting fluids injurious to human skin? Cutting oils can be contribute to skin infection. Some syllable oils have disinfectant added to kill bacteria and eliminate others. When an excess amount of disinfection is added, the syllable oil may irritate the skin. Can mineral oil cutting fluids cause skin infection? In syllable cutting oils consisting of mineral or fa fatty oil, sulfur, and chlorine are the principal causes of skin irritation and inflammation among the shop workers. How is skin infection from cutting oils be prevented? Personal cleanliness is the most important weapon against disease. Oil should kept away from pimples, blackhead, causing other skin eruptions or openings. Wash frequently with hot and cold running water. Utilizing a mild, non irritating soap, machines and tools should be kept clean and free from dirt and grease. What should be done when skin irritation develops after contact with soluble oils? All skin irritation should be medically treated as soon as they are observed. The advice of the family doctor should be obtained immediately. Care of the lath. The lath is designed to produce machine parts of a high degree accuracy. The working parts of a lot are machined ground lath polished and scrap, fine precision tolerances. They require attention. They must be kept clean and well lubricated. How often should a lot be oiled? The answer will depend upon the length of the time that the lot is used. When in use, the head stack bearings will be oiled daily. What is the correct procedure in oiling lath? Stop the lath beginning of the head stack, oil the gear and the bearings from spindle feed gear box, proceed systematically along the length of the lot and tail stack hand wheel, wipe off all oil droppings. How often should the bed dovetails and waste be lubricated? The wheel depends upon the what type of metal is being machined. The bed should be lubricated at least once every eight hour day or eight hours work shift. What is the correct procedure of lubricating the waste of the lot? 
Leave the carriage in position and wipe the waist clean to the both left and right of the carriage. Oil the waist. Then move the carriage. Wipe and lubricate the rest of the bed waist. Procedure follow. Followed when lubricating dovetails of the cross slide and compound slide. It is always good practice to wipe clean the machine surface, such as the waist of the lot and the dovetail slide of compound rest and lubricate them before moving the surfaces that are in contact with them. How are the ways of the lot lubricated and keep free of chips when lot is being operated? Felt oil pads at each end of the apron, clean off the chips, lubricate the waist. The left pad should be removed and wasted in the kerosene periodically. What causes the deep marks often seen on the bed waist of a lot? The waste of blood can be scored by small steel chips becoming embedded in the saddle or the base of the tail stock. All grit and chips should be removed and the bed waste lubricated before the saddle or tail stock is moved along the waist. What are the bad practice posts, the surface condition and accuracy of the bed waste? The careless habit of placing tools on the bed waste raises bursts burst that affect the smooth action and accuracy of the saddle and the tail stock. Such burns should burn shush, such burns should be removed with a scraper or oil stone. Always place tools on a board provided for this purpose. What are the important parts of the lot required daily lubrication? The bearings, threads and key and keyway of the lead screw and fed rod are important. The threads of the lead screw should be particularly oiled during the operation of the thread cutting. Is there a way to clean the chips from the lead screw without injuring the threads? The best way to clean the threads on a lead screw is to take one third around the thread of the lead screw with a piece of heavy string. Start at, at one end and pull the end of the string back and forth as the lead screw reboots. Should, should the lead operator oil the motor of the lead? This will depend upon the type of motor and the practice of the shop. Lubrication instructions are usually given on a plate attached to the motor frame. Observe the type of bearing. This will indicate how the motor should be lubricated. Why is it important to close the covers and replace the oil plugs of rotating? The plugs in the covers prevent dust and chips from entering the oil hole. Dust and chip ru ruin bearings. What special care should be given to the spindle nose? The spindle nose should be wiped, clean, and lubricated before a chuck or a face plate is mounted. If the spindle nose is treated, is treated, the threads should be examined closely for small chips before and after it has been wiped and lubricated. How should the internal taper of the spindle be cleaned? A piece of cloth wrapped around the stick and inserted in the headstock spindle hole will clean all chips except those that have been permitted to embed themselves in the surface of the tape. Embedded, embedded chips can be removed with a three square scraper. scraper. How can a chip become embedded in the surface of internal spindle taper? How can this be prevented? If a chip remains in, in tapered hole and the taper shank of a drill or other taper shank tool is driven home, this chip will become embedded in the surface of the taper hole. Any taper shank tool placed in the spindle hole will be out of through and accuracy will be affected. What causes the lat spindle to slow down sometimes install the tool bit begins cut to cut the metals? When the lat spindle slows down or stall as the tool bit begins to cut, the spindle is probably Still, one ping on the pulley. Sp slippage may be due to oil or grease on the belt, or the belt may be stretched. Grease and oil may be removed from a leather belt with a solvent. Adjustments may be made to tighten loose be belts. Chapter 9 Toilet Lids the, to the toilet lid is adaption of the engine lid as integrable manufacturing and mass production principle were developed it it become necessary to create machine tools cable and producing parts in large quantities the first storage lead 
consisted parts in large quantities. The toilet meat is a possible to hold a number to of cutting tools and to index them then into possible as needed needed once the cutting tools were set up were set up in the toilet and the cut parts could be in the industry toilet late play a very important parts in the mass production of parts number one what are the variable types of toilet plates? Toilet plates uh, can be classified into into two main groups, horizontal and vertical. There are many types and size of toilet plates. Is each group two commonly used horizontal toilet plates? In, in include the rim type, handle type and the automatic choking machine number two what is a ram type lid a ram type turret lid as the index indexing horizontal turret mounted on the ram slide is complied into the bed or waist of the machine the saddle guide which many be moved to possible the header weight when sitting up the machine is always in, in one position for any particular job one of the minimization of the ram type uh, machine lens in the length of the movement of the of the ram which fell off from 4 to 15 in de depending on the size of the machine number three what is the saddle type of the plate a saddle type toilet plate is the turret mounted on mounted and a saddle that 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 the travel on the way on the way on the ways of the lead, lead the saddle that is equipped with uh, an apron and gears box to provide power feeds a large feed wheel is used from private power feeds a large feed wheel is a use for hand feeding this type of turret plate provide provides a more more for the turret, turret it it can make long during the end boxing job huddle type machine are classified as big center turret and compound cross side machine the physical machine one uh, machine is a one in which the toilet ring uh, remains in figuring al alignment with the table center line or assist of the head stock paddle figure nine to one principal parts of a ram type toilet lid warner and suisse the cross ceiling horizontal toilet has power and hand feed across the bed as well as it is principal pencil principality used for work in which numerous foxing cut and necessary when the turning and the boring cut are uh, not a major impossible import important integral upper head third 
and can also be cut the compound cross slide machine is used with for tuning angle engine and for proper having to great angles than can be with a taper at multiple cut can be made by using both cross slide tools and saddle tools which save much the time much time and cost said what are the princip principal of of uh, horizontal turret legs the horizontal turret legs consent of four major assim assembles the bed the headstock the carriage and the turret each a each of major sim assemblies contain a number of principal parts such such as those so in the fig figure 9-1 and 9-2-1 of the first re requirement of understanding the operation of this machine is that the operation know the names of names and factor functions of its principal parts number four describe the bed the bed is a long box like constant with regular rectangular ways upon which are mounted the carriage and turret it is support and headstock number five what is the headstock the, uh, the headstock is a large constant located on the left end of the bed it has that has that transmission which operate op operates the bed spin spindle at various speed this speed are controlled by the putting speed selector figure 9 to 9 and 2 principal parts parts of a single type storage plate Warner and Swissy Swissy figure 9 to 3 multiple cut using both cross slide and saddle tools and same the time same time Warner and Swissy what what is the card the card card see figure one a uh, nine to one is until that is figure over the waist of the bed mounted upon it is the tools part past the front of the carriage incredible the upon which contain is the the feed the carriage is reversible power feed running from 0 0.005 to 0 0.176 in in and also this receivable power cross feed ranging from 0 0.002 to 0 0.0 88 in revelation of the speed most of them have long nothing have long 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 genital and cross feed passive passive step which up to to the feed according to the 
works. Seven. What is the to the turret figure nine to four? Is the hexagon shape tools tools figure nine to seven con constant the one multiple cutter tuner number three combination and face and tuner number four quick acting slide tools tool Cent number five center earning tool number six adjustable knee tools seven die head number eight clutch stop clutch top and die holder number nine floating holder tool holder number ten combination stock stop and starting drill number eleven topper snatch tools so socket number 12 drill stock number 13 combination stock step stop and center number 9 tools holder number 10 collate collate thank you I'm Shudita Tepper, second year student of BSME. My presentation on ME224, Machine Shop Theory, is a short introduction of tapers. Tapers, if a job changes size gradually but uniformly along its length, it is said to be tapered. A cone is tapered. Its diameter decreases as a regular and gradual rate from the base to the apex. A wedge is a tapered. It is thickness increased regularly and gradually from the thin end to the thick end. Tapers have many use in a machine shop and also parts of machines. The spindles of drill press, lathes and grinding and milling machines have internal tapers. These internal tapers give perfect fit and grip to the matching external found on drills, reamers, arbors, milling cutters, centers, and so forth. Paper fits make possible the speedy assembly and disassembly of machine parts. Most tapers used in machine shop work are cylindrical. Square and rectangular shaped tapers are used as keys to fasten machine parts together. What method is used to express the amount a piece of work is tapered? The amount a job differs in diameter from the large to small diameter is known as taper. If the large end is 1 and 1 8 and the small end is 3 4, then the taper is 1 and 1 ninth minus 3 4 which equals to 3.8. You can see it in figure below. Taper the different size from large diameter to small diameter if the job is cylindrical. From large to small thickness if the job is rectangular or square in section. Taper per inch or TPI. The amount, the size changes every inch of its tapered length. Taper per foot or TPF. The amount, the size changes every foot of its tapered length. What is the correct method of expressing the amount of taper on the job? The correct method of expressing the amount of taper will depend on the size of the job, the policy of the shop, or the standard given in the handbook. On large size work, the taper is usually stated in taper per foot or what we call TPF on small work, instrument work, and so forth. Taper per inch or is used or TPI. A job that is tapered can also be dimensioned in degrees. This is usually done when the amount of taper exceeds 15 degrees. Is tapered 
work more commonly dimension in fractional or decimal sizes. The degree of accuracy required for the finished job will in most cases determine the methods of dimension in the job if only common fractions are used. The usual size tolerance is 0 0.005 diameters and 1 over 64 on length. Where extreme accuracy is required, all measurements are given in decimals. How many different kinds of tapers are used in the machine traders? A specific number is difficult to give six standard tapers are commonly used in industry there are also manufacturers who prefer to use their own taper standard on their machines what are the recognized standard tapers used throughout the machine trades there are several standard tapers which have been adopted by industry. The most important and most widely used among these are the brown and sharp, Morse, 3 fourth inch per foot, taper, pin standard, Jarno, and Jacob tapers. Some of these are used for specific type of works. Other have more varied application. What is meant by the American National Standard Machine Tapers? In 1943, the American National Standard Institute classified 22 self-holding tapers as standard. They were selected from the Morse, Brown and Sharp, 3 4 inch per, feet, per, per foot series. How are tapered pieces machined? The method selected depends upon the type of equipment available, the size and the angle of the taper, and the numbers of pieces to be turned. Methods are one, the compound rest, two, of offsetting the tail stock, and three is the tapered attachment. What determines the method used to turn a tapered shaft? The equipment of the shaft is an important factor. If a shop has a lathe with a taper attachment, it is doubtful whether the tailstock offset method would be used. The shape, size, and structure of a job also play a part in determining the method used to turn a taper. How is the size of a standard taper hole measured? A tapered hole can be measured with calipers, micrometer, and rulers. This method is not satisfactory when the fit of the mating tapers will determine the effectiveness of the holding power for a reliable test of the accuracy of a tapered hole. A tapered plug gauge should be used to test the accuracy of tapered shank. A taper ring gauge should be used to test the gauge, the accuracy of the tapered shank a chalk line is drawn the length of the taper plug gauge and it is then inserted into the hole. Here we can see a picture of taper plug gauge and a taper ring gauge. Are all tapered hole bored on a lathe? Many tapered holes are finished on a cylindrical grinding machine. Small tapered holes are drilled to the small diameter size and finish with a tapered reamer. The picture of Morse taper reamer and taper pin reamer. And in the last part of my representation is the, la is the chart of taper formulas where we can find taper per inch if given is taper per foot. And taper per foot is to find taper per foot and if the given is taper per inch. Then taper per foot, small and large diameters and length of the taper in inches is given. And distance between two given diameters, taper per inch, amount of taper in inch for the given length. And that's all my representation. Thank you.